In this video, we're going to take a look at solving mixture problems using an, a system of equations. As with any application, it's important we start by defining the variables. So we know what we're working with. And with mixture problems, it can be kind of tricky to clearly define the variables because we're going to be mixing two things and ending up with a final solution. So it might be worth defining the first solution is at such and such a percent, the second solution, or dollars or whatever, is at such and such, and then the final solution is at such and such. And just kind of organize what we know about the two things that are mixed together and the final solution, so we don't get those mixed up. Then once we do that, we can make an equation for the amount that is mixed together, and a second equation for the mixture that is created. So for example, we've got a store owner who wants to mix chocolate and nuts to make his new candy. He wants to know how much chocolate, which costs 150 a pound, should be mixed with, uh, 40 pounds of nuts that cost $3 a pound to make a mixture worth 250 a pound. So let's define our variables. What are we mixing together? Chocolate and nuts. So let's use C for chocolate. N for nuts. And then I'll use F to represent the final solution when they're all mixed together. You could also use T for the total solution. I see that also as well. Let's organize what we know about the chocolate. We're told that the chocolate cost 150 per pound. So we'll put the chocolate is at 150 per pound. We're told we've got 40 pounds of nuts that cost $3 per pound. Well, then the nuts, we've got 40 pounds of nuts, so we don't even need the N, because we know everything about the nuts, $3 per pound. And the final solution, we're told, is 250 per pound. So it's going to be at 250. And it's important to look, the final should be somewhere in between the other two, because they're going to be mixed together to give you almost an average of the two. So let's make an equation for what we've mixed together. A lot of that information is going to come over here from the right, or from the left, sorry. And we're going to take some chocolate, and we're going to add to it 40 pounds. And that's going to give you some final solution however much we end up with. Now we need a second equation to represent the mixture. Well, the chocolate has a price attached to it of 150, or 1 1.5. And we're going to add to it the price of the nuts, which is $3, for each of the 40 pounds. So we have to multiply it by the 40 pounds. Equals the final solution we want to be worth 250, times the amount of the final solution. Notice in the mixture, we have this problem of the price times the amount, the price times the amount, and the price times the amount. All that needs to be in there. You'll also notice that now we're completely set up to solve by elimination, or I'm sorry, substitution, because we know what f equals. f is equal to this stuff, so we can replace the f with the c plus 40. So we have 1.5c plus, let's go ahead and multiply these together, 120, 3 times 40, equals 2.5 times c plus 40. Solving then, we'll distribute the 2.5, giving us 1.5c plus 120, equals 2.5c plus 100. We want to get the variable on one side, so we'll subtract 1.5c from both. That gives us 120 equals 1c, we don't need the 1, plus 100. And subtract off the 100 from both sides, and we get c is equal to 20. What's nice about this problem is the question's asking us how many pounds of chocolate we need. It doesn't really care about the total. 
So all we care about is the pounds of chocolate, which we just found to be 20 pounds of chocolate. So let's take a look at another example to see if we can organize our variables, figure out what they all mean, and use that information to make two equations. Here we need a 55% alcohol solution. On hand, we have 600 milliliters of 10%. We also have a 95% we're going to add to it. So we'll just use A and B for the two solutions, and they're going to combine to equal some total. So A is the amount of the first, B is the amount of the second, and T is the amount of the total. We could also use F for final, but I didn't want to mix that up with first. So let's see what we know. Let's be really careful here. The 55% alcohol solution, is that talking about the first, the second, or the final solution? It's talking about the final solution we're looking for. It's what we need. So the 55% is the total, which always must be as a decimal, 0.55. Then we continue on, and we have 600 milliliters of the 10%. Well, that's nice, because now we know the first, we don't need a variable for, we know the amount. It's 600 milliliters, and it's at 10 percent. 0.1 is 10. We also have this 95 percent that's going to be added. That's the 0.95 of the second. And again, notice your final solution is somewhere between the other two. That's important. So now we can make an equation for the amount, is we started with 600. We added some unknown amount, B, to give us the total final solution. The second equation, talking about the values, the 600 had 10 percent dilution to it, so we have to multiply by 0.1 times the 600, plus the second is 95 percent diluted, so 0.95 times the amount of the second, is equal to the total, which is 0.55 times the total. Again, we see the pattern, um, percent times amount, percent times amount, percent times amount, all the way across. And again, we're set up to solve by substitution. Replacing the T gives us, let's multiply while we're at it, 60 plus 0.95B, equals 0.55 times 600 plus B. Distributing is going to give us 60 plus 0.95B equals 600 times 0.55 is 330 plus 0.55B. Get the variable on the same side by subtracting 0.55B gives us 60 plus 0.4B equals 330. Subtracting 60 from both sides, 0.4B is equal to 270. And finally, dividing by 0.4, B is equal to 675. Notice also, B is the amount that's going to be added, that second amount, and the question is just asking, how much do you have to add? It doesn't care about the total amount, so we've got our final solution. We're going to add 675 milliliters of the 95 percent, and we have our final solution. With mixture problems, you want to make sure you take the time to identify the two mixtures that are combined and the total mixture, and what percents or dollar figures go with each as you create your problems.